Uh, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, I am Barry Gordanchuk. I have the honor of chairing uh, the New York City Council's Committee on Parks and Recreation. Uh, today we will be voting on one piece of legislation which is sponsored by my colleagues uh, Giovanni Williams, Laurie Combo, and Matthew Eugene, and we do expect Councilman Eugene here shortly to uh, discuss that. We'll ceremonial, ceremonially co-name a street in Brooklyn after Jean-Jacques Dessalines, one of the leaders of the Haitian Revolution and founders of Haiti. Uh, my colleagues will speak more about his accomplishments, but needless to say, as someone who was uh, born into slavery and who then led the revolution against France to ultimately become the leader of his country, uh, he is a historical figure and of great importance to the Haitian community here in New York and in Haiti. Um, and I uh, do urge my colleagues to support this co-naming. Um, but before we get to that, um, we are lucky to have three people who are going to testify. Uh, really honored to have them with us. Um, uh, one person who no, needs no introduction, but I'll give her one anyway, uh, is Assemblywoman Radnis uh, Bichot. Uh, we're also joined by Sergey Joseph and uh, Gerard, I think that's Cadell? Cadet. Cadet. I don't see that T cross, Mr. Cadet. <laughs> Mrs. Rosenthal would not be happy. Um, so I am going to ask the Assemblywoman uh, to testify first, and we'll welcome her testimony. We're also joined today, of course, um, by one of my colleagues, uh, Councilman Joseph Borelli. We have two former Assembly members here and one present one. So. Assemblywoman, please. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. I, we really appreciate uh, you and your committee uh, for putting this hearing uh, specifically for the co-naming of this great hero. I first want to introduce myself. My name is Assemblymember Rodney Spichot. I represent the 42nd Assembly District, which is part of Flatbush, Brooklyn, and it holds the largest Haitian concentration of Haitian population um, in New York State and the largest in the U.S. outside of Haiti. So we are certainly proud um, to be here today to talk about uh, a historical figure who we hope to co-name in our neighborhood as we have pronounced Little Haiti this year in the City Council in Flatbush, Brooklyn. I do want to thank uh, the speaker for, um, again, allowing us to, to have this hearing today. And I would like to thank the two co-sponsors of this legislation, which is the Majority Leader, uh, Lori Cumbo, as well as uh, City Council Member, Jemani Williams, who's been, again, really at the forefront of fighting for, on behalf of the Haitian community. Um, by co-sponsoring this uh, legislation, um, a street for a street co-naming after a world leader, one should not be forgotten because he was black or because he was a slave. But we should recognize his strength, um, who defeated a well-known army, the French army. Jean-Jacques de Salines is one of the greatest heroes of the modern world. He is one of the founding fathers of Haiti, having taken charge of the Haitian Revolution to stunning, improbable, imaginary, unimaginable victory in defeating the French Napoleon army in 1804. This was significant to world history. The Haitian Revolution is not only the first and only successful slave revolution in the Americas, but also resulted in Haiti being the first Latin American country and second in the Western Hemisphere to declare its independence after the United States declared independence from Britain in 1776. He was the first ruler of Haiti. Now, the independence of Haiti reshaped the Atlantic world by leading to the French sale of the Louisiana to the United States and encouraged Republican revolution in Latin America and eventually Africa. And under one of the generals, Pétion, Haiti provided direct assistance to Simon Bolivar 
on at least two crucial occasions during the latter successful efforts to secure independence for the Spanish colonial territories throughout Latin America and South America. As you mentioned, um, Dessalines was born into slavery in the French colony of what was known as Saint-Domingue. In 1791, he then joined the fight for freedom when thousands of brutally exploited enslaved people rose up against their colonial masters and their enablers in France who murdered and massacred hundreds and thousands of people across the Caribbean. Can you imagine that? Hundreds and thousands and probably millions of people across the Caribbean. This is what the French did. He joined Toussaint Louverture's army, who was an ex-slave, uh, who actually came to France's aid during its revolution. Nonetheless, as many of you may know, Toussaint Louverture, diplomacy, and some may say his naivety, um, was then used to mislead him through trickeries of France. He was then captured, he was shackled, he was kidnapped out of his own country and shipped to France where he died. So Jean-Jacques Dessalines, a man of very strategic and smart, he witnessed that he could not trust the French. Sometimes victory is momentarily and for the French, it was with hope that Haiti's victory was momentarily. With letters of proof showing that the French was not done. So yes, after Dessalines won, he ordered these oppressors to leave the island. They didn't, in preparation to re-enslave the natives of Haiti. With that, Dessalines did order to execute the oppressors who were seeking to oppress and re-enslave Haiti. However, it was in the name of freedom. It was in the name of reclaiming back their land and not in the name of oppression. Also, you may find there's some readings in particular Wikipedia that Jean-Jacques de Salines killed whites, all the whites, which is not true. He had very close allies to the Polish who left the French army and also he had also um, allied with some of the French Haitian loyalists. So, you know, it is funny how, again, this topic of black liberators um, that freed black country uh, right after the U.S. that helped the U.S. expand um, its territory that partnered and helped other countries throughout the world in the Americas, liberating and freeing and reforming, implementing reform policies. It's funny that this man uh, was questionable. Not only questionable, but his accomplishments were diminished in some of these readings so that he can be viewed as a savage and anim animalistic going around just killing people. It's one thing to kill for greed, like many of the colonizers and oppressors, but it's another thing to kill for freedom. When we honor many of our historical figures, think about the lens of back then and not use the lens of today to criticize what was war. We talk about Columbus, Christopher Columbus, who had his share of capturing, murdering, and raping, and taking lands. But we honor him still. We talk about Thomas Jefferson, who, as many of you know, had sex with a 12-year-old slave, Sally Hemings. And at that time, slaves who were considered property didn't have consent but we honor them. Talk about George Washington, the very first president of this great, mighty state, 
who sold slaves for a keg of molasses. We, t we talk about our beloved Abraham Lincoln, who had expressed opposition to racial equality and that the white man be superior, be the superior race. But again, we honor them and we honor them because we have to think about how we view these people back then. Do we see war of yesterday as we see war of today? The violence of slavery that was a play for 400 years on humankind, whether it was on a small scale or large scale, we should take note of that. We should take note of the many slaves that were deprived of food or whose hands were chopped and face and bodies were dis disfigured or who were just killed. How about stripping women of their clothes and inserting honey up in their genitals so that ants can eat them alive inside? Think of what was going on back then. How about stuffing dynamite in men's rectum and lighting them to be blown apart? Think of the cruelty after cruelty. These were examples of institutional and organized violence. Violence of whipping, starving, raping, ripping children away from their families. That is what we consider barbaric and animalistic. Not the acts of Jean-Jacques Dessalines, who sought to stop those who were evil. So the violence that French plotted against millions of blacks or just millions of many, should not be equated to the few thousands of whites who were defeated during a Revolutionary War in Haiti. What the French did was nothing short of genocide, and it would have taken violence to stop these violent war acts. It's called war. And Jean-Jacques Dessalines, again, killed to free not only for Haiti, but for many countries around the world. The many people around the world, including the United States of America. He exemplified the true meaning of democracy. Nelson Mandela said it well. Are we free? We are not yet free, let alone have the freedom to be free. So, Mr. Chair, New York City Council, today the Haitian community, the allies of the Haitian community, the greater Haitian community, are all supporters of the Haitian community, come before you to vote to honor this hero. Let us pay homage today to my great, great, great grandfather, Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Thank you. Thank you very much, Assemblywoman. Uh, we have been joined by council members uh, Francisco Moya of Queens, Eric Ulrich of Queens, and uh, Matthew Eugene of the Great Borough of Brooklyn. And I understand, uh, Councilman Eugene, you'd like to make uh, some remarks at this time. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. As you know, uh, I'm Matthew Eugene, the New York City Council member representing District 40. And I would like to thank uh, Chair Uden Chick for providing me this opportunity to speak about this legislation to be named Rogers Avenue between Fargot Road and Eastern Parkway Jean Jacques Dessalines Boulevard. I would like also to thank uh, Council member William for this uh, legislation for which I am a co-sponsor. Jean-Jacques Dessalines had an enormous impact on the nation of Haiti. He was, in fact, one of the nation founders. In 1791, Dessalines joined a slave rebellion that was ignited by the French Revolution. 
Sie haben als Lieutenant an der Toussaint-Louverture das Adina Leadership und Military Skill was critical to Louverture, to Toussaint-Louverture, being able to capture in the Spanish-controlled eastern part or half of the Highland of Hay. Louverture then uh, made this sudden governor of the southern part of the island. Toussaint Louverture established himself as governor general of Santo Domingo until 1802. The following year, the Saline and other black leaders rose up against the French and expelled them from Santo Domingo when they attempted to reintroduce slavery. On January 1st, 1804, the Saline, as the governor general declared, that the entire island of Hispaniola was an independent country named Haiti and was governor until uh, his death in 1806. I ask my colleagues and the committee to vote to this legislation that honors Jean-Jacques Dessalines whose leadership and great military skill were instrumental in abolishing the slavery and making Haiti the first black independent nation in the world. And I want to take the opportunity also to thank all my colleagues in the city council, the city council for the continued support to me and to the Haitian community. And I remember in 2008 when we voted the resolution 1995 to ask the federal government to grant the TPS to Haitian people. The entire city council was supportive and we voted overwhelmingly. And also during all the advocacy going back and forth to Washington, the city council has been always with me, with the Haitian community to ensure that Haiti, Haiti was granted the TPS. And I want also to take the opportunity to thank the entire council for the legislation on the family reunification. When I introduced this legislation also, the entire city council was with me with the Haitian community, and we voted to ask the federal government to grant to Haitian people, or to Haiti, the opportunity for Haitians to come to wait for green card or for the legal status in the United States, the same way they did for the Cuban. And I remember vividly also the support of the entire council when we voted the legislation to declare October 9th Haitian Day in New York City. Because October 9th was the date when the Haitian people, my ancestors, came to Savannah, Georgia to fight for the independence of the United States of America. They gave their life for this, for the independence of the United States of America. And then uh, the legislation was voted by the city council and now, officially, because of the support of the entire city council, October 9th, the date of the Battle of Savannah, Georgia, historic battle for United States and for Haiti also, is officially Haitian Day in New York City. We're going to celebrate it very soon. And I want to thank you, all of you, and I urge you, my colleagues, to vote yes for this legislation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Eugene. Uh, we will now hear from Mr. Joseph. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chair Gonencheck, and uh, uh, thank you, Council Member uh, Eugene. Um, good afternoon. My name is Serge Joseph. I'm a lifelong resident of Brooklyn, and for the last 14 years, my wife, daughter, and I have resided in Dickmas Park, uh, Flatbush on East 19th Street. Um, before then, uh, we lived in Crown Heights, uh, also in Brooklyn. I urge the Committee on Parks and Creation to adopt the legislation at issue and co-name Rogers Avenue, as indicated, Jean-Jacques Dessalines Boulevard. Jean-Jacques Dessalines is a true hero to all those who cherish liberty and freedom, not simply black or white, but the principle of liberty and freedom. I say this 
not only because I'm of Haitian descent and have an interest in advocating for one of my own, but because in words and deeds, the Saline exemplify this love and freedom for all. His words are found in Haiti's Declaration of Independence, where Dessalines stated in part as follows. Remember that I sacrificed everything to rally to your defense. Family, children, fortune, and now I am rich only with your liberty. My name has become an hour to all those who want slavery. Despot and tyrants curse the day that I was born. Therefore, vow before me to live free and independent and prefer death to anything that will try to place you back in chains. Swear finally to pursue forever the traitors and enemies of your independence. His deeds are self-evident. From the 1780s to December 31, 1804 and beyond, he fought a war of attrition against all the then superpowers of the world. Spain, England, and of course, France. In conclusion, I would like to say that history does not belong only to its narrators, professional or amateurs. While some of us may debate what history is or was, others take history into their hands. Dessalines and the heroes of the Haitian independence have been silenced and ridiculed long enough. We have an opportunity to take history and rewrite history into our hands. Honor Jean-Jacques Dessalines would be an incredible step. Thank you again, um, and um, city council uh, members uh, Eugene uh, Williams and Cumbo for introducing the legislation, this legislation to the council. Thank you very much, Mr. Joseph, for your testimony. Um, we have one more person to testify, that's uh, Mr. Gerard Cadet. Mr. Cadet, please. Good afternoon, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, the chair, Mr. Chair, we're in check. And uh, Councilman Erich uh, and uh, Councilman Eugene. And Councilman Moya. <laughs> and Borelli. <laughs> And well, Borelli came okay. the father, so you have to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, today is a privilege that uh, I have to come in front of you to speak about uh, somebody that is of great meaning to every color people in the world. Uh, so I'm speaking about uh, General Jean Jacques Dessalines. Jean Jacques Dessalines. Uh, 14 days after the Haitian independence, following the declaration of uh, independence of Haiti from France, General Jean Jacques de Salines sent a letter to the U.S. Congress and the Merchant Marine. In this letter, as it is reported in the Missionary Journal of 1823, Desalines offered to pay the growing rate for a slave at that time, that was $40 a head, for each slave that would be sent to Haiti so they could be free. Jean-Jacques Dessalines refused to accept the norm of his, time, of his time. He did not want to be the expected outcome of what 200 years of indentured servitude will do to a man. He believed that all men were created equal and he not only believed that, but he practiced it as well. So today, we assemble here to not talk about how beautiful it is to be Haitian, nor how brave it is to be Haitian, how brave our nation can be, but to glorify and memorialize a citizen of the world, a man for all generations, someone to whom any decent, peace-loving, a human being 
who believe in equality and justice for all uh, would stand firm to honor. Before there was Gandhi, before there was Marcus Garvey, before there was Dr. King, there was Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Dessalines' achievement can still be felt today. His challenge to the imperial European authority, his fight against white supremacists, his stand for racial equality, a thing that many of us should take uh, a lesson from what's happening in our country today. So we are in such challenging time in this country, so it is time that we stand there and honor people who stood for freedom, people that stand to bring people on equal level. A, the freedom, the, what Dr. King fought for, what Gandhi fought for a, many years before, what Nelson Mandela fought for in South Africa, all of it began in Haiti. That's where the black men stood up and say, I'm a man and I shouldn't be enslaved, I should be free. So with that, I'm really asking the, uh, uh, the, this committee to really support this end of year of honoring such a great leader, somebody who really, really stood up and said that slavery no more. And because of the, his achievement, that was either continued later on by Alexander Petio, we free a whole continent of South America, a Bolivia. Simon Bolivar came to Haiti to talk to one of the Salian lieutenants, who long after the Salian died, to ask for support from Haiti. And Haiti was there, he stood there, we helped everybody we needed help. And when Simon Bolivar asked Alexander Petion, what is it that we should do for you after we free Bolivia and South America, the response was just what the Salian would have responded, just free the slave. So with that, we're asking you to honor this man, this hero. Anybody who believes in justice, who believes in equality, should stand with us and honor uh, uh, General Jean-Jacques Dessalines. So with that, we say thank you for your support, and we know that from your heart you will do what's right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gadet. Again, thank you, uh, especially, of course, to Assemblywoman Bichotte and uh, all of you for coming to testify on this very, very important matter, uh, certainly of great importance, uh, not only to the Haitian community, but to all New Yorkers. So um, we are gonna take a, what I hope will be a very short break. Um, we are expecting one of our colleagues momentarily. We all have a different definition of what that means, but uh, um, hopefully momentarily means a few minutes. So. If I could ask the indulgence of the members of the committee um, not to stray too far, as in don't leave the room. Um, where's the sergeant in arms? Uh, we, will, uh, we will hold a vote on this uh, resolution uh, very, very shortly. Sorry.
Testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. Oh, see? It's still on. It's on again. One, two, and two, and two.
Izzy, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh, we will now uh, resume our hearing. Uh, we have been joined at this time uh, by Councilman Germani Williams of Brooklyn, and he'd like to make a brief statement on the bill. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you for granting this opportunity. Uh, I do have to get back to court, probably the only elected in court for a very good reason, actually. Um, but um, I'm very proud to be um, sponsoring the bill for the renaming of Jean-Jacques Dessalines, and I want to thank Assemblymember Bernice Bichot, who's actually uh, been the driving force behind this, and Little Haiti. I think it's uh, very important for people to see uh, themselves in New York City and their history. Uh, I always talk about the Haitian Revolution as a black man, uh, how much it means to me that they were the first free slave nation, uh, and as an American, how much it means to me, because without uh, Haiti, we would not be the America we have now in doubling the size uh, of the country. Most of the world owes a debt to Haiti that um, has never been repaid, and in fact, it's unfortunate that Haiti had to repay France uh, for their own freedom. They had to pay back money that was owed because they treated slaves as objects to be bought and sold. And so I think it's important to celebrate uh, the people of this revolution that uh, hopefully inspired others at that time and continue to inspire people now, and especially at the time uh, when we have an uh, orange bigot in the White House, uh, specifying communities with specificity like Haiti and Africa, calling them s whole countries. Uh, I think this is the least that the council can do. So I just want to say thank you to the assembly member. Thank you to uh, Laurie Cumbo. Thank you to uh, Speaker Johnson. And a special shout out to uh, Jason Goldman. And of course, the chair, Barry Gretenchik, for allowing us to get this through in uh, such an easy fashion. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Williams. We're going to um, we're going to take a brief hiatus now, and we'll be back for a vote very shortly.
All right, uh, we, are, we are back um, for a vote now. We've been joined by Council Member Costa Costantinides, and I think we have a junior councilman with us. Could you please identify yourself for the record, young man? No. Nicholas Constantinidis. Nicholas Constantinidis. Nikos? Mm -hmm. Welcome, Nikos. We're happy to have you with us. I'm now going to call on the clerk, uh, Billy Martin, for a roll call vote. William Martin, roll call vote, Committee on Parks and Recreation, preconcerted introduction, Chair Gordenchik. Aye. Ulrich. I vote aye, and I want to congratulate the Haitian American community in New York City. Constantinidis. Vote aye. Brandon. Aye. Moya. I vote aye. And uh, I also want to take the opportunity to thank uh, my sister from the Assembly, uh, Assemblywoman uh, Rodneys, for her great work uh, that she's done for the Haitian community. Uh, and thank you to the chair. Borelli. Aye. By a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstention, item has been adopted by the committee. Thank you, Mr. Morton. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you to those who came to testify and uh, look forward to seeing this on the agenda for the next stated meeting. With that, we are adjourned.